morning and happy Sunday to you. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. The Lord our God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Come on, let's begin to magnify him. Let's worship the Lord together. Come on, let's gather our family around, our friends, wherever you may be today. Come on and let's give him glory on today. Hallelujah. Come on, turn that volume up. Put those hands together, everybody. Put a smile on your face. Song says, we're ready for you to move. We invite you to fill this room. Come take your rightful place. We need you now. Help me say, we're ready, we're ready for you to move. For you to move. We, invite you we invite you to fill this room. To fill this room. Come. Come take your rightful place. We need you now. Yeah. Come, Holy Spirit. Come touch your people. Come, Holy Spirit. Come set your people free. Come, Holy Spirit. For your presence here, we invite you in the atmosphere. Come take your rightful place. We need you now. Come on, we're desperate. We're desperate for your presence here. For your presence yeah, we invite you, we invite you in, the in the atmosphere. Come take your.
Shooting. And it's coming right to 
He's gonna shift the atmosphere. Hey, in my direction. Oh, and there's a breaking. It's in my favor. As I, as I pray. Oh, there's a breaking. Woo, how many of y'all believe that tonight? on this Sunday morning right here, right now. Come on, I want you to put your hands together and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, put a praise on it. A song of the Lord coming for you today to minister, to encourage, to enrich you, to strengthen your faith. There is a breakthrough, a breakthrough, a breakthrough, a break. Oh my God. Come on, hallelujah. for yourself in your direction there's a breaking there's a break Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, that's 
it, that's it. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. That's it, come on. Worship and adore him in the beauty of holiness. Oh, worship, we worship, we worship. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Don't miss this, 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 this kairos, this, this set time, this moment that even before the foundation of the world, God ordained. Thank you, Jesus. Today is your day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Step into it. Enjoy it. Receive it. Take your burdens and lay them before the Lord right now. Don't, don't hold on to them another moment more. Just throw it at his feet and worship him. Look to him. And I promise, I prophesy changes in your spirit, your soul, and your body. Even this day, the Lord's day. Oh my God, he's mighty in our midst. He's present. He's present to save. He's present to heal. He's, he's present to deliver. That's his nature. His nature is to save, to heal, and deliver. And it comes to you right now. Just receive it. Say, I, I, I receive it, Lord. I, I, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Receive the blessing. Receive it even now. Even now. Don't have to wait for the rest of the service. Right now. Right now, this very moment. This very moment. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody may have stumbled on to our stream this morning and right at the, the exact time that God wanted you to, to encounter him, to experience his love. He'll make a difference in your life if you'll just let him. Don't wait till the end of the service. Right now, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just say, save me, Jesus. Put your faith in him. Believe and God will save you. God will deliver you. God will heal you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Welcome, Agape fam online. Wow. Man, it is so powerful in this place. And we pray that it transcends this house and gets to your house. And for all who will make the connection, not just view us as a performance or as performers, but as you praise and as you worship the Lord right along with us, miracles will happen. Great things will happen. Wow. Don't you sense his joy? The joy of the Lord that gives us strength, his favor, uh, everything that you have need of. It's yours right now. I know what I'm talking about. I've been walking this walk for a while. I know it. I know it. I know it when I hear his voice. I know it when, when, it's, when it's his spirit and when it's not. This is his spirit. This is his voice today. Oh, my God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands right where you are and say, yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every heart. Every heart. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. That's it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's it. Give him, give him permission to have his way. Yes, Lord. Have your way in my life. That's what you're saying. Have your way here today. Have your way during this service. We want you to be glorified in all things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Man, I hate so much still that we're not able to assemble uh, together physically, but I am grateful. I am grateful that even in a pandemic when there are all these restrictions, we can come to you and in the spirit and we can connect. If you have not done so already, please let somebody know Agape's on. And I know that uh, we are going to continue to experience um, God's goodness, God's glory, and I know every moment is going to be power packed. So let somebody know, get online right now. And uh, listen, if you haven't done so already either, please greet one another. Virtual hugs and, and hey everybody, if this is your first time being with us, thank you. It is our pleasure to come to you today 
And uh, here's what I'd like you to do. If it's your first time, just take a moment and text first time to 797979. As soon as you do that, we're going to send something out immediately to you from our heart to yours. And listen, just as soon as we are able to assemble together uh, in, in this physical uh, geographical locations, please join us because I want to meet you. And uh, I, I want you to know that uh, we love you and uh, we appreciate you taking time to worship with us today. Well, uh, we're going to continue in our worship and, and and again, keep those virtual hugs going and love on somebody. And uh, let's keep the praises going forth in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Come on, let's continue to bless him. Let's continue to magnify him. Yeah.
Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, if you are not up and awake yet, I don't know what's the matter with you. I'm telling you, there's so, so much good energy here, and it's the, the presence of the Lord, and, and I'm, I'm excited about a, a, a relationship with him. For me, this is not drudgery. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to praise and worship the Lord. Uh, if it's a handful or thousands, uh, I'm, in, I'm in my element, and I trust uh, you as well. Uh, listen, I wanted to share a couple of quick announcements, and I'd like you to prepare your heart as well for giving as we worship the Lord in giving. But first, I want to share a couple of things with you. Well, um, can you believe it? Uh, this is September 13th. Saturday is September 19th. And of course, next Sunday, September 20th. Typically, each year we have a women's weekend. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've had to uh, make some changes. We are still going to have a, an augmented, uh, modified women's weekend, but we're going to have a good time just the same. So ladies, this one's for you on Saturday, September 19th, that's this Saturday at 11 a.m., meet us in the parking lot uh, at 11 a.m. promptly. It's not going to be long. It's going to be short and sweet. It's going to be praise, prayer, and fellowship. And I want you to come wear your mask. Social distancing will be observed. We're just going to have a good hallelujah time in Jesus' name. Ladies, come. And then on Sunday, the 20th, I am pleased to present uh, this dear uh, woman and powerhouse indeed. She's going to minister at our 9 a.m. service on next week, Bishop Jacqueline McCullough. Uh, she is an amazing woman of God. Awesome. Uh, she, she's been with us pretty much from the start, and I'm grateful uh, to have have her uh, to speak to us um, in its women's weekend, but brothers, we're going to receive as well. Furthermore, on the 19th Saturday is our FIT uh, celebration, our FIT ministry celebration, our 45-day uh, wellness excuse me, 45-day church challenge, our 2020 wellness reset. And can you believe it? Uh, this is day 43, and so we've just got a couple of days left. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, we will conclude, and, and uh, I, I'm going to have Ben and Jerry's Chunky Monkey. It's in my refrigerator. Y'all, there was a sale, 288 at ShopRite. I went and bought a few more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't have, I don't, I'm not in a, an addict, but I just kind of been putting it on hold for a little bit. And I'm not going to eat them all at once. Oh, but praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. On um, Saturday, we, because of the pandemic, we're doing things just a little differently. The first portion, we're going to do our celebration day in, in, in two segments or two sessions. The first of which will be Zoom. A Zoom celebration and award ceremony will begin promptly at 9 a.m. and it will go to about 10:30. And uh, we will share with you, uh, as the pastors, uh, Pastor Mary, uh, Pastor Bishop um, George, and Pastor Mary Seawright, and I, along with other sponsors, we're going to share some things with you during that time. We're going to announce our winners, and uh, we're going to have a special fitness and mindness movement segments as well. Then at 12.30, right after the women are finished with their praise, uh, prayer, and fellowship time, we're going to meet and uh, we're going to have some uh, refreshments and some goodie bags. And, and uh, we've got a, a sponsor that's just been confirmed, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. We've got uh, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A Chick -fil cow is going to be here. There's going to be some giveaways. You're going to be blessed. Make certain that you have your submission report in um, by tomorrow. Uh, your points are, are racking up, and we're going to see who the winners are going to be. Furthermore, um, D free, D free. Now I gotta, I gotta look at my notes here. They, they sent me a number of things here. This D free program is, is, is wonderful, and it's not just to help you get out of debt. It's just to help you with financial empowerment. And our team, headed by Elder Audrietta Islar, is just absolutely awesome. Uh, we've got a virtual ten week uh, a, a course that is prepared for you and it will begin on September 29th that's a Tuesday and it will be consecutively on Tuesdays and uh, you need you to register online at agapecenter.org you can go right to our website where you can do agapecenter.org um, forward slash forward uh, reset furthermore we've got um, 
a number of great things that they're going to uh, provide for you that will help you in lead, leaving a, a, a legacy, uh, helping you um, rearrange or realign your finances and get your financial house in order. Uh, I think some people during this found uh, during this pandemic found out the importance of having savings. Um, perhaps they didn't have savings or didn't have enough savings. And uh, this class is going to help you with those kinds of things. And here's something that you can do. You can register early and receive the early bird special, which is $30. The regular price is $35. And you need to do this um, uh, by 920 by the by next Sunday. So make certain that you do this and take advantage of five dollars goes a long way It'll be a help to you your course materials your textbook is all included It is a great a great investment that will bring a change to your life a positive change And we've gotten wonderful testimonies of those who are so very grateful that they've taken the class and their lives have been forever positively changed. Well, it's time to worship the Lord in giving, and I'd like to call your attention to John 14 and 15, where Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Furthermore, in um, Matthew, um, the word of the Lord uh, to us is to love the Lord with all of our heart. Jesus said, love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. In other words, everything about you, love him. And I thought about our giving today and what I would share with you. And, and simply and briefly, it's this, uh, love the Lord. And if you love him, love what he loves. Do what he says. Don't struggle not over money. Trust the Lord. If you love him, love what he loves. Care for the things that he cares for. As we give our tithe, 10% of our increase and in income, we do so not out of, uh, out of some uh, religious uh, or ritual um, um, uh, observance. We do it at, from a heart of love, that, that I love Lord. And I, I'm grateful that you bless me so that I can be a blessing. We give to the kingdom of God so that the kingdom may be advanced, so that the church may be edified, so that there may be meat in my house or provision in my house to, to do the work of ministry. Um, when we do it from a pure heart of love, one that is sincere, God sees that act, and God sees what we do in secret and promises to reward us openly. I thank you for your faithful commitment to the Lord and your support of ministry here at Agape. I thank you a zillion times, even in the pandemic, that you remain faithful. We appreciate you so, so very, very much. You're empowering us to continue doing ministry even in difficult times. God sees your faithfulness. God sees your act of love, and God will reward you. As you cast your bread out on the water, remember Ecclesiastes 11.1, 1, it's coming back to you. I promise you, according to the word of the Lord, that God is not a man that he should lie. As you partner with him in giving, you can claim the promise of Philippians 4 and 19, that God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Instructions for giving are right there on your screen. Many of us are giving electronically. That's how I, I give, and I, I appreciate all of you who are doing that. And then also for those of you who, who can't get with the electronic giving, but you will take your check to the post office and mail it here. Thank you so much for your kind and generous support of ministry here at Agape. Worship team's gonna come back and lead us. This is worship as well. So let's worship the Lord because we love him. Let's give and let's give cheerfully. Let's give generously and let's give purposefully for his glory in his name and as an act of worship by faith. Thank you in, in advance. Bless the Lord. We have victory in Jesus. Yeah. There's no defeat in our Savior.
Listen, let me just say this before we go any further. A zillion thanks to one of the most amazing mu music ministries on planet Earth. I want you to give it up for our Azamar music ministry team headed by uh, Lauren Dawson. Come on, give it up to all these fine uh, uh, singers, worship leaders, musicians, and, and for the team that's behind the cameras and on the audio board. Without them, we couldn't bring it to you. So, I mean, come on, make sure you put it there in the chat. I am so encouraged just by uh, receiving uh, the, their ministry today. My heart is lifted. I mean, I'm just feeling great. And then just to cap it off with, uh, for, because God is the greatest power, we shall not be defeated. God's been speaking all service long, and you ought to hear what the Spirit is saying and be blessed. Be encouraged today. Amen. Won't you take your seed and lift it up before the Lord and our Father. From your hand, we receive this seed that we release back into your hand. And because we love you, we give. Because we love you, because we care for the things that you care for, we are pleased to give. We are blessed to be a blessing. Receive what we give today from our hearts. And I pray, Father, that our giving makes a difference in our world for the advancement of your kingdom and for the edifying of your church and I thank you that you take every seed and you multiply it and you return it to us and I pray 100 fold not 100 times but an optimum return on every seed sown now in Jesus name I pray amen blessed be the name of the Lord I want you to go to first Corinthians chapter 3 first Corinthians chapter 3 and while you're there uh, while you're heading there, I just want to share uh, two more quick, quick announcements with you. Uh, Numa Life, which is our school of ministry here, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, sc school of ministry in partnership with Oral Roberts University. You can take courses and you can receive credit that can go toward uh, a, a, a bachelor's degree, although our program uh, it is not an undergraduate one. The credits that you receive, you can apply. Uh, it's good for us to learn more about the word even if we're not trying to get a degree in theology um, learn more about the word the new testament the old testament signs and wonders and uh, numerous courses that we have uh, that will be a blessing even as continuing education for more information go on our website and and look for the the link to numa life school of ministry and you can find more information there Here's a other thing that I want to share with you. Okay, two weeks from today is September 27th. September 27th, we're going to have our online 9 a.m. service as we have been doing now since March. 9 a.m. online service. But then at noon, we're going to have a second service in the parking lot at noon. We're going to give you some details. We can only at this point, unless things change be between now and the 27, accommodate 500 persons. We'll give you instructions on how you can get in on that number. But we're going to have an outdoor service. I want to do so before the weather changes. And, and um, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to, you know, reassemble here soon and, uh, and sooner than we, we, we think. 
But in the meantime, we are preparing uh, for an, a, a, a wonderful, I believe, and in fact, what's in my spirit in charge uh, of the Lord is to have uh, an amazing uh, time of, of praise and worship and, and, and ministry. I'm going to be praying for the sick and believing God for miracles on that day. So I want you to start praying with me and for me. I'm just believing God for great things. Amen. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, three and uh, some you might think well man that sounds familiar weren't we there last week yes and I told you last week last week would be part one and this would be part two our father our hearts are open to receive from you the word of the Lord speak through these lips of clay and I thank you father for connection with these your people this is good ground thank you father that they will readily hear the word of the Lord and together we will be doers of the word for therein is the blessing thank you father that you will use this word this impartation to transform every one of of us to take us from faith to faith glory to glory and strength to strength in Jesus name I pray amen first Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 I want to read these for you again if you missed last week please um, go, you can go to YouTube or go to uh, uh, the archives in our live stream and and view it again and it will be a blessing to you and the word of the Lord and I brethren could not speak to you as to spiritual people but as to carnal as to babes in Christ I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For there are envy, strife, and divisions among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? From these verses, we began teaching last week uh, with this topic, moving beyond mere. We will continue in the same moving beyond mere. And I have um, a, a, a sneaking suspicion that uh, I may need a third, a third week to, to do this because there's just things stirring in my spirit to share with you today. Um, lest we forget, let me remind you of our 2020 charge. Even in the midst of COVID-19, a pandemic that we did not anticipate, God gave us a word. Remember, he's all-knowing, all-seeing. Uh, the pandemic didn't take God by surprise. It may have taken many of us by surprise, but God knew about it. He, there's not a time that he didn't know about it. And God gave us this word to go forward. Exodus 14 and 15, Moses stopped crying. Tell the people to go forward. So our theme for the year is forward. And I pray that you've been uh, seeing movement and 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 momentum not just movement some folk are moving but they're not experiencing momentum god wants us to make movements forward rather than backward but he wants us to experience momentum as well when we consider this particular book of the bible uh, paul the apostle paul's letter to the church at corinth we find that even from chapter one that this was a gifted people a gifted church uh, they came behind in no good gift the scripture says they have been they were enriched in all good things in knowledge and God was doing some uh, an, um, amazing awesome things in their lives they were gifted but they also had issues it's amazing as I said last week how you can be gifted and still have some issues and uh, Paul needed to address those issues and when you consider this book in and 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 the complete book or letter or epistle of Paul you'll see that he addressed several issues like strife in the body of Christ, division and, and issues regarding the table of the Lord and issues also uh, with regards to the ministry of the gifts of the Spirit. We see that this people, though gifted, were immature. They should have been, they should have matured, but they were still behaving uh, like carnal folk, immature. And he, he gives us the example of, of, of some of their carnality, that being envy, strife, and jealousy. Carnality means to be fleshly. It means uh, to have the nature and characteristics of the flesh, that is to behave in the flesh and in sin. God did not give us to be born again to continue in sin. How can we who are dead to sin continue or live any longer therein? God forbid, Romans chapter 6, our lives are now hid in Christ. Let those who name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. He says, you are still behaving like mere 
men, like normal folk, like regular people, like folk who haven't been born again, like folk whose lives haven't been changed, and that ought not to be. And God would speak the same to us today for those of us who are yet struggling with things that we shouldn't be struggling with. We should have grown up by now. God knows you've been walking with the Lord for 10 years. You ought to know that telling lies is inconsistent with Christ. Uh, we shouldn't have to uh, uh, come before you preaching elementary things over and over and over again. You should be growing up into the full stature of Jesus Christ. So Paul had to deal with these. They were living beneath their privilege, purpose, and potential. So it is today many of us are living beneath our privilege, our purpose, and our potential. I thought about this verse even in preparing um, for ministry today and uh, I, I thought Lord I don't want to be like those that are cited in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 7 I don't want to be like those who are always learning but never come into the knowledge of the truth let's not be those who are always uh, wanting the, the latest series reading the, the next you know book wanting to get all of the truths of, 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 of scripture um, but don't want to come to a, a, a knowledge of the truth and understanding of it and then the expression of it. Uh, we don't work for salvation, but we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling, bringing it into, uh, uh, into expression each and every day. The word mere means being nothing more nor better than. Nothing more nor better than. That's not God's design for us to be nothing more and, 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 and nor better than. It's not for us to be meager, to be measly, to be plain, to be ordinary, to be common. Rather, as I pointed out last week, God's design, God's plan for us and God's creation of us, uh, what, was, what was in the heart of God from the beginning, what's in his heart now, what God desires for us is that we be decorated, excellent, great, exceptional, excellent, extraordinary, and of course, all things in Christ and uncommon. So in Christ, make that declaration again, say in Christ, I am decorated. I am great. I am excellent. I am exceptional. Yeah, I am extraordinary. I am uncommon. I know that's a stretch for, 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 for many to say because you're considering even as you're saying it, it doesn't just make sense because you know all about your flaws, you know about, about your issues. But God uh, would have me to speak to the greatness that's on the inside of you and to know that even this word is coming uh, to bring us into alignment with the will of God. Remember, we were created to live by a higher standard. We were created to be a cut above. We were created to do what others are unwilling to do, what others cannot do. We were created to stand out among the others, to stand out even among multitudes, to stand out in the crowd. I want to share with you in these few minutes that I have remaining, and, and if you're taking notes, and I trust that you are, um, I, let me pause here to say this. I, I was thinking about this just the other day, that my mom would, um, in, in the saints of, of, of old, um, before they had journals and notebooks, they would write on some of everything, and you would find it in their Bibles, notes from messages that they, that they heard um, being preached, even if it was just the title of the message and the scripture. Uh, uh, use your pen, a, a uh, 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 or pencil or whatever writing device, it is said that a, a, a short pencil is better than a long memory. It'll help you to, uh, to take the word of the Lord and, 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 and have it reinforced in, in your spirit and in your mind. And so if you t since you're taking notes, I want you to put hashtag facts. Hashtag facts. I'm going to give you five things that make us stand out. And let me say this, that when I speak with regards to these things from my heart to yours, and then I trust from your heart as well, it's not about arrogance, but confidence. I'm not being arrogant. I'm being confident in who I am in Christ Jesus. The first thing that makes us uncommon, that makes us stand out, that makes us uh, um, uh, the opposite of mere, measly, and meager is that we are a chosen generation. 
Just declare that. Speak that over your life. Say, I'm a chosen generation. Uh, first, first Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Let me pause for a moment. King James Version says a particular, uh, peculiar rather people, a peculiar people. And folk who didn't understand uh, the language there thought um, the peculiarities of our ways, our actions, sometimes the peculiar was more like weird. Well, the Bible says we're peculiar. What it it means is that we are his own possession. We're his special possession. We're his own special people. He says that we may proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous lights, who were once not a people, but are now the people of God, who had once not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We are a chosen generation. We've been regenerated. We have been chosen, selected, handpicked by God. I want you to consider as well Ephesians chapter four, chapter 1 and verse 4. I want to read the amplified version for you. It says, even as in his love he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him and, and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. We've been selected by God, handpicked. And uh, so as not to get it twisted, let me remind you of what the Lord said to Israel, uh, what he gave Moses to declare with regards to their being chosen or their being selected. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 7, where in essence he says, I've chosen you because I love you, not because you were great, not because you were many, many but because I loved you. And, and I wanted you to make you a special treasure a people out of, uh, from among all the people of the earth. Please don't ever get it twisted, even as Jesus said in James, John chapter 15 and verse 16. He said, you did not choose me. I chose you. Well, I love it when I think about God's choosing us, God's choosing me, God's choosing you and I, that we are not God's second choice, not his third choice, not his fourth, not his last choice. We are God's first choice. Hear me, the text says, even before the foundation of the world, before Adam met Eve, before your grandparents met each other and exchanged their seven digits, before your parents came together, God chose you. Remember what I said even earlier, that God is omniscient. He's all-seeing. He's all-knowing. God knew everything about you, everything that you would do everything that you would think to do everything that you thought about doing but didn't didn't get an opportunity to do everything that you carried out every sin that you committed every flaw of yours every weakness of yours God knew of it and said still there's something about you that I can use and he chose us in himself and so, please, don't ever get it twisted. It's not because of your good looks. It's not because of your name. It's about his name. It's because of his love. It's because of his grace. It's because of his mercy. You are his first choice. Ah, first choice, first choice, first choice. Some folk, uh, uh, be, they, 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 their, their experience in life is that uh, they were always picked last ever since elementary school. When the teams were being selected, you were always picked last. And, and, and you started feeling bad about yourself like nobody wanted you. And sometimes the enemy will try to make you think, that uh, God only selected you because there wasn't anybody else to select. Not true. God selected you. God chose you because he wanted you. And according to the text here in James 15 and 16, he chose us to be fruitful, that we may bear fruit. So we are chosen in him, chosen in love, and that we may bear fruit or that we may produce. And so as people who are a cut above, people who stand out among the crowd, God expects that we bear the mark of fruitfulness and being productive in life, in business, in ministry, because he chose us. I belong to God. So you don't have to like me. <laughs> it really don't matter. It don't matter what you think about me. It doesn't matter what I think about you, but please understand, I think well of you. But I know that I got some haters, and I'm sure I'm not alone here all of us have some haters, some more than others, but don't let people, don't let people's assessment of you uh, cause you to forget 
your identification in Christ and who to whom you belong and to who you are. I have been chosen by God, which brings me to my second fact that we are children of God. He chose us and then he gave us to be, um, um, uh, but he gave us to in believing on him to become his children. I want you to consider with me this particular text here in 1 John 3, verses 1 through 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Let's skip to verse 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. It hadn't yet revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So when God has chosen us and then God gives us this privilege of sonship. Ah, my God, as many as believed on him, James, John chapter 1 and 12 said, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. When the text uses the, 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 the phrase sons of God, it, it means the children of God. So that is inclusive of male and female. We are the children of God. Sonship, oh, the pleasure of sonship, oh, the privilege of sonship, oh, the blessings of sonship. I believe that I, I, I believe on the Lord Jesus. He, he, he gave me then uh, this right, this privilege to be called a child of God. I'm God's child. You don't, have to, you don't have to believe it. It's not up to you. He receives it. You might think, well, uh, of yourself that I've just done too much. I've, 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 I've sinned too much. I've just blown it too many times for God to receive me. But that's what the enemy, the accuser of the brethren would have you to believe. God doesn't want you to be stuck in your past. He He's delivered you from your past. As far as the east is from the west, he takes our sins and removes them from himself. He doesn't remember them against us any longer. Don't let the deceiver keep you in your past. However recent that past may be, when your sins have been washed away, you are cleansed and you stand before God as if you have never sinned. I'm going to say it again. I remember the first time I heard it, I even struggled to believe. Could this possibly be truth? It is truth. When you stand before God, Having received salvation, knowing the word says, behold, all things are passed away and all things are become new. You stand before God. He doesn't see your sins. They have been washed away. Ah, he sees you as his child, cleansed and purified before him. Years ago, I heard a message. In fact, to me, it was one of the greatest messages I, I heard Bishop J., the late Bishop J.O. Patterson preach. I had the cassette tape, and I think somebody swiped it. Somebody took the tape from me. But it was a message entitled, A Forgetful God. And Bishop J.O. Patterson was Bishop G.E. Patterson's ne uh, uh, uncle. And he preached this message, and it was just powerfully communicated. He talked about... Um, to hear that God is a forgetful God may, may sound like a heresy. How can God forget? He doesn't forget to keep the sun in orbit and in place, doesn't forget to clove the lilies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he went on to share and using personal illustrations on how humans forget, how he himself forgets. And he gets to that point with, with God as far as God's forgetfulness that the only time you see it as is at as it relates to repented sin. When you repent of your sin. Your sins are cast into the sea of forgetfulness and they will not be remembered against you any longer. Somebody ought to be praising God. You know the stuff you did. You know the, you know the, things, um, um, that, the, the things that you did and the, things that, and the folk that you did it with. But God doesn't remember them against you any longer. Satan will try to taunt you with it. He'll try to haunt you with it. He'll try to keep you from moving beyond mere having you stuck to your past. Oh my God. He doesn't want you to enjoy the blessings of right now, the, 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 the blessing of, of being forgiven, being redeemed, being saved in the present nor in the future. I've said it for years and I want to remind you today that God will not consult your past to determine your future. Be free in Jesus' name. You are chosen by God and you are a child of God. The third thing, the third fact that uh, makes us to stand out among the others, makes us to be opposite of mere, is that Christ is in us. Christ is in you, believer. Christ is in us, church of Jesus Christ. Christ is in us. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. The mystery of the secret which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. 
to them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery or secret among the Gentiles, not just for the Jew, but for the Gentiles. What is it? It's this. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. And as the text says, and I, I, I point to you, I stretch out my hand to you, not to be rude, but to make a point to emphasize this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in us is the only hope of sharing in his glory. Note, Christ is not outside of us. Come on, believer. Christ is in us. Yeah, you need to hear that. You need to receive this. You need to embrace it. Then you need to express it. Christ is in us. So if Christ is in us and we learn that Christ, in fact, Christ is the Greek word, which is comparable to the Hebrew word Messiah. Christ means it's not his last name. It's, it's, it's a designation of who he is. It's, it's a title of whom Christ is, uh, that he is the anointed one, the chosen one, the sent one. So Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. Uh, the anointed one is not, uh, uh, is not disconnected from his anointing. The anointing of Christ, the anointed one, is in us. So Christ is in us, the hope, the confident expectation of glory. Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing uh, abides in us. This is not poetical or a language of Paul or, or, or he, he's not using a metaphor. He's saying that Christ literally and personally is in the believer. We find as well in scripture that we are the body of Christ, that we are the temple of God. He said, don't you know that you're the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? Think about it. If Christ is in me, the anointed one and his anointing and his anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes, then I, I'm a cut above indeed. I have something that can remove burdens and destroys yokes. Christ is in us. The scripture says that Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. So if Christ is in us, then we've got the wisdom of God in us. We have the power of God in us. And so therefore, since there is no defeat in Christ, for those who have Christ in them, there is no defeat. Defeat is not an option. Only victory, only triumph, only, only an overcoming mentality, a spirit that prevails. Christ is in us. And as people who are a cut above, people who are uncommon, extraordinary, not in and of ourselves, but in Jesus Christ, when we lay hands on the sick, we got to remember it's Christ in us. So as we lay our hands, it's not our hands, but it, it's, it's our being a part of the body of Christ and in his name laying hands on the sick. There's not a person that Jesus touched who needed healing that didn't receive healing. There's not a person who came to him possessed that was not delivered. But Jesus never lost a battle, always won everything. Any encounter always came through. And that same living Christ, that risen Savior, is living inside of us, which causes us to be extraordinary, which means we got to get rid of the excuses of, well, I can't live this thing. I can't treat my brother right. I got to keep talking about people. No, no, no. Christ is in you, uh, the victorious one. He's made us to be more than conquerors. The fourth thing, the fourth thing that I want to share with you that, that, that makes us a cut above is that we are salt and light. You and I, believers, Christians, we are salt and light. Matthew 13, excuse me, Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16, says we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. Yeah, the light we cast or reflect, of course, is Jesus. We're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. Um, we should be insightful. Uh, we should be influential. We should be impactful or impacting. Salt makes a difference. Put salt on the food and it changes its flavor. Salt flavors. Salt preserves. In ancient times, before they had refrigerators, they would use salt to preserve meats. As we know here in the Northeast, salt is used to melt ice. Uh, salt has, has many uses. God says of the believer, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. And he says, let people see your good works. And in seeing your good works, 
Let your light shine. Nobody takes a light and hides it under a bushel. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Because God has made us to be extraordinary and uncommon, just something about our walk, something about our talk. When we walk in the room, uh, folks should notice something different about us. You should not um, be uh, viewed as a hypocrite or just like some common folk, even on the job. And you don't walk around with an air. Re remember, it's not arrogance, it's confidence. But when you walk in the room, somebody ought to say, there's something different about this one because you cast the light, the light of Christ. And finally, number five, number five, we have power and authority. Yeah. Come on, believer. You and I have power and authority. I remember when I first got this revelation, when I first got what became revelation to me, um, uh, I, I would, as a teenager, I received Christ, grew up in church and had been around uh, the teachings of, of, of church even as far back as I can remember. I remember um, reading a book on prayer. Uh, one of the uh, 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 ladies at church, um, uh, it, I saw that she was reading this book, and, and she had actually she had read it already. And she said, here, take it. You can read it. And it was a book about prayer, and it just opened up my understanding like I had not known before. You know how you see people who, who've been walking this walk for years, and you think that, well, that's just for a few select folk. But no, there are things that God has for all the believers, whether you are a pastor, a minister, apostle, prophet, or not, that there is what's called the believer's authority. I want you to consider Acts 1 and 8. It's a familiar passage, but you shall receive power or dunamis after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria and to uh, the end of the earth Luke 9 10 rather and verse 19 and says behold I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means will hurt you we are more powerful than we know I promise you, you are a whole lot bigger on the inside than you are on the outside. We have allowed the enemy, the deceiver, to cheat us out of our authority. If you hand over your authority to the enemy, he will take it and he will use it against you. We've got to recognize that in Christ Jesus, we're not to be mere immature folk, but rather mature People of God who are clear on our uh, clear regarding our purpose, our calling, our potential, and the power that He's given to us. I want you to consider Ephesians chapter one. In the interest of time, I'm not going to read all these verses, but just start there around verse 15 and and take it even on into chapter two. And Paul, after hearing of the of the love of the saints and of their faith in Christ Jesus, he says, "I'm praying for you. I'm constantly praying for you that that uh, you." will have uh, be enlightened, that the eyes of your understanding uh, will be enlightened, that you will see, that you will have a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ, that you will know the hope of his calling, that you will know the inheritance of his inheritance in, in us as saints. He goes on to say that you will know the power of God, that power that is, as some translations say, toward us, others say for us. It's toward us. It's for us. This very same power, note, the text says it's the very same awesome, mighty power, uh, uh, power of God that raised Christ from the dead. He said it's for us. It's to us. And this power raised him from the dead and he's seated at the, uh, in heavenly places at the right hand of God the Father and everything that's got a name is under his feet. And when you get over in chapter 2, we find out that we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Beloved, Satan doesn't want you to know how powerful you are. He doesn't want you to be aware because if you ever get an understanding, you're going to use this power as you should against him so that nothing by any means should hurt you. You don't have to live in depression. You don't have to be oppressed. You don't have to be bound to sin. You don't have to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. You don't have to be bound when Jesus Christ has set you free. You have power over the enemy as you submit your life to God and resist the devil. He's got to flee from you. He doesn't want you to get this. He wants you to think that you're that, that that, that, that you're nothing 
as it relates to his power. Oh, but outside of Christ, he would be right. But you are in Christ. And therefore, the Christ in you, the scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Satan doesn't want you to get the revelation, but God would have you. And God would have me to remind you of those of you who already know about this authority that you have been given. It's time for us to walk in it. It's time for us to step into it like never before so that we're not just being common folk, religious folk, that we're just church churchgoers going to meeting saints but that we are people no matter if you're an usher if you're a deacon if you're the preacher man or the preacher woman God wants us to move in power my job my responsibility my apost my, my apostolic uh, uh, role and 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 my gift of, of a pastor is to equip you, to teach you. I can't do everything by myself. It would be a fool for me to think that I could be effective trying to do ministry myself and withholding truths from you. No, God said, I'm going to give you some pastors after my own heart who will feed you. I want you to be fed. I want you to be filled to the full, but I don't want you to just get word and get meat and then grow spiritually fat. No, it's time for us to exercise our gifts. It's time for you to lay hands on the sick. It's time for you to get out there and, and plant seed and water seed that's been planted. It's time for you to cast out devils. God doesn't want any believer, any child of his to be afraid of the devil. Not when he's given us authority over the devil. Not when he's promised and nothing by any means shall hurt you. God wants you to stick out your chest in Christ. To lift up your head. To know that I am somebody in Christ. That I'm not going to walk around as a defeated child of God. No, I'm going to walk in my victory. I'm going to walk in triumph. I'm going to do what the Father called me to do in by his power. I'm not going to allow the enemy to give me a no when God says yes. I'm not going to allow the enemy to keep tripping me up and tricking me and all of that. No, 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 no. That was yesterday. That was yesteryear. But I'm stepping into my purpose because I, I'm, I'm decorated in Christ. I'm great in Christ. I'm exceptional in Christ. I'm extraordinary in Christ. I'm supernatural in Christ. I'm uncommon because of Christ. So believer, I charge you, as God says, go forward. Get out of immaturity. Come on over here and be mature in Christ. It's time for you to put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Stop being stuck in stupidity. God would have us to be those who reign on earth as kings by the grace of God and the gift of righteousness. I serve notice on the enemy. Today is the day that we're coming out of here. You're not going to continue to trick us. You're not going to continue to defeat us. We're not mere men and mere women but we're powerful we got power and authority we are a chosen generation we are a royal priesthood we are special we belong to God we're children of God he is our father he is our daddy no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment we shall condemn I feel like preaching right here can I have about 60 more seconds. God would have us to know that Christ is in us the hope of glory so that wherever we go in his name, that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. He raised us up and made us to be seated together in heavenly places to make a difference in our world, to make a mark that's impossible to be erased. So whether it's in the classroom, whether it's in the, in the workplace, uh, whether it's in uh, oh my God wh wherever it is that you work in government in business uh, in entertainment in athletics uh, God would have us to shine let me remind you beloved that this is the day and this is the hour where he's calling us to go forward he's calling us to come out the closet he's calling us to go into every man's world he's calling us not to be afraid to be fear fearless he's calling us to be confident he's calling us to have courage be of good courage for the Lord is with you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and even now we come against every addiction we come against every vice of the enemy every skill
scheme that the enemy has sent to destroy, to discourage, and to devour. In the name of Jesus, we say, Satan, take your hands off the people of God. We put a stop to your work even now. You've been successful in the past. Oh, my God, you might have won, the, you might have won some battles, but you didn't win the war. We're taking back what the devil stole. We're pulling down. That is demolishing strongholds in the name of Jesus. And I speak to the greatness that's on the inside of each and every one of you. Come out of mediocrity. Come out of an, just being an average Joe. It's time for you to be who God created you to be. It's time for you to step out in faith. It's time for you to be all that God has created you to be. Stop giving God excuses. Stop saying what you can't do. When God said you can do all things through Christ, that strengthens you. I want to encourage somebody today that this is a day where the cycle is broken and the struggle ceases. That you extend yourself. That you raise your level of consciousness. That you get ready to take flight like the eagle God created you to be that you as the righteousness of God are as bold as a lion. Don't let the devil hold you back. When God said the doors of opportunity are open before you, it's time for you to bust a move. It's time for you to say yes, Lord. Wherever you say go, I'll go. Whatever you say do, I'll do. I wish I had a witness up in here, maybe even out there. Somebody ought to be saying yes, Lord. I'll do it, Lord. I'll go Lord I'll not be fearful any longer I'll pray for the sick even if I don't get the results that I want I'll keep praying I'll say next who's next I'll extend my faith in the name of Jesus I'm preaching to every pastor every minister up until now you've not experienced the favor of God that you imagined and I come against every obstacle and every hindrance even in the spirit of your mind and I break it and I remove it, that burden and I destroy it by the anointing of Jesus and in the name of Jesus for every child of God chosen generation I dare you now just to lift up your hands and let's receive a fresh impartation, a touch from God, the anointing of God, the fresh oil of God be upon you God's presence be with you wherever you go. Do what he put in your heart to do. Believe for miracles. Expect. 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 Stop thinking small. It's time for you to start thinking big. Come on, get a can-do in your spirit. Say, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I will succeed. I can try it again. I can do it in Jesus' name. I will build the church. I will extend the ministry. I will grow. I will make it. I will make it. I am a winner. I'm more than a conqueror. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Come on with me right now. Put a, put a praise on it. Come on. Every heart, put a praise. Come on, come on, come on. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be strengthened in your spirit, man. Oh, my God. And I thank you, Father. And I praise you, Father, for granting us these things in Jesus' name. And oh, we bless you. Oh, we praise you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right where you are, I want to pray for you. Right where you are, I want to pray for every one of you. I want you to just lift those hands again before the Lord, our Father. Here we are. Uncommon because you've made us to be uncommon extraordinary though we've been living like mere men living according to humored standards living far below beneath our privilege our purpose and potential but I pray today that this charge will not fall on deaf ears that each of us are energized not just inspired not just challenged but transformed thank you father in the name of Jesus from this moment on we will never be the same in Jesus name Amen. Somebody, go ahead. Uh, I want at least 100 of you to do it. Come on, just put, put it in there. Make that confession of faith. Say, I will never be the same. I will never be the same. 
I will never be the same. Come on, somebody put it in there for me. I will never be the same from this day on. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. You will never be the same. If you didn't pray with us earlier to receive Christ, you need him in your life, I give you Jesus right now. If you've turned away from him, come on back home. Repent of your sins. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I missed it. I changed my heart. I changed my mind. Save me, Lord Jesus. Deliver me. Set me completely free. Come on, backslider. Come on back home. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Instead of growing closer to you, I distanced myself. But thank you for reaching out to me. Receive his forgiveness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uh, I believe what I'm hearing, the name Dana. Uh, don't want to assume being female or male, but, but Dana, today is the last day you will struggle with your identity in Christ. This message was for all of us, but you know this word was for you. That vicious oppression and attack of the enemy is destroyed today. Remember what I said earlier, God will not consult your past to determine your future. You are greater in Christ than you know. And God's got some amazing plans for you and you'll understand it better when you move from this point to see the realization of the revelation that you're receiving today. This is time for you to move forward and don't even look back. The new thing is yours in Jesus' name. If you prayed with me to receive Christ or if you rededicated your life to the Lord, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to text agape, the word agape to 797979. Let us know. You'll be met with a prompt and just let us know of your experience. We want to rejoice with you and then we want to connect with you. If you want membership at Agape, don't wait till we reassemble. Come on, join our family. Be a part of our family if you need a church home. I'm not into stealing other people's members and, and I'm, that's just not me. I've not done that in 30 years. But if God has called you to this house, then make a commitment and be a part of what God is doing. Join me on the prayer call this week. Look forward to praying with you and then being back on Wednesday. Thank you. I went over a little bit with regards to time here today, but I trust that you were enriched. And um, I pray peace in every home, healing and deliverance. Remember what I said earlier. It's his nature to save, to heal, and to deliver. God heal you. God set you completely free in the name of Jesus. Arise and be healed. The doctors may have given you a bad report, but Dr. Jesus gives you a good report. Whose report will you believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Watch and see. Watch and see. Remain confident in this. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Shalom. God bless you. Shut up.